This is Top Gamer 007 here. We have a couple of news articles for today. Links to all news articles and timestamp is going to be in the description below. And don't forget, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and let's get started. Fire Emblem Warriors got a really interesting interview that is really long and two pages long on Nintendo Everything, even if they're not the source. I am going to focus on the interesting things in the interview with Yusuke Hashida and the director of Fire Emblem Warriors, Haru Ai Yasuda. I probably pronounced them wrong. And the original source is from Nintendo Dream, but I'll be covering it from Nintendo Everything. Remember, the full interview is going to be in the description below. And let's get started with the interview. The first thing that intrigued my eye is why have a female Robin? Asuda said, quote, the Robin told you about before was the male version. But someone said, since Robin is an avatar, you must be able to select between male and female after all. Yusuda also continues saying, quote, Robin that appears in the story has been fixed to be male, but if you progress through a certain replay ability feature, there's a system that lets you choose female Robin too. So it's confirmed that male Robin is the main Robin throughout the original run of Final of Warriors when you play the game first. But you can obviously play as female Robin or choose female Robin after. But I wonder if they're gonna have voices over for female Robin as well, but we find out when the game comes out. Yusuda even talked about Cornelia and Krom and how will their relationship be in the game, but obviously Samia, Krom's canon wife, is not in the game. So a lot of fans, including me, is wondering how Cornelia is going to uh, interact with Krom, right, in, <laughs> in Fire Emblem Warriors, and you already know in Awakening, Cornelia had a special thing for Krom, uh, some weird stuff. So Hayashida said, quote, the point of not getting rewarded may have been the secret to Cornelia's popularity. And Yusuda responded with, we have another reason why we decided to add Cornelia is because we wanted to write her conversation with Krom. <laughs> and Yusuda, or Hayashida, crush fans like, Fans that wanted something to become of them, I don't know. Uh, some weird fandom stuff, let's just move on. Saying that, quote, It won't mean that a new relationship between them is going to develop, but I think you get to enjoy the situation itself, where those two get to talk with each other, but obviously in Awakening, get to talk. Cornelia and Krog get to talk to each other, so I wonder what type of talking they're talking about in Warriors. Nintendo Dream continued with the interview, with the method of including strategic features exclusive to Fire Emblem in Fire Emblem Wars, Yusuda said, quote, In the end, you will want to give individual orders to everyone. You order things like, this character should attack this place or should proceed through this route in order to proceed that desire, that outcome when you're playing Fire Emblem in a Warriors game. We added systems like, Weapon Triangle, Effective Damage, Character Change, and Flying Units. Warriors games have been about tactical action, so we have superb capability with Fire Emblem strategic elements. Every single day, Fire Emblem Wars is looking like an action game cross Fire Emblem because they keep on adding all these new features or features from Fire Emblem, making it not a skin of a, a Dynasty Warriors game, more like a Fire Emblem game. And I love this, man. And while fans are waiting for Fire Emblem Switch, fans like me, I think Fire Emblem Warriors will please most, well, please most Fire Emblem fans. So the thing I worry about is its release date of October 20th, a week before Super Mario Odyssey. I don't know if people have enough incentive to choose a Warriors Cross Fire Emblem game over Super Mario Odyssey, a huge Mario game. Well, it's a week before, like, I don't know. If I only had $60, I would choose Super Mario Odyssey, but, well, I, I don't know. It's confusing. It's hard to see if people will buy this over if they only had $160. But 
I don't know, most people might pick up two exclusives. A lot of people are hungry for a Switch game, so any game that come on this Switch, people buy apparently. So, yeah, I, all we could do is wait and see until see the sales and hope that they have enough sales for uh, Kony Tecmo for making another Warriors Cross game for Nintendo platform. Let's move on to a rumor, so take this as a grain of salt that Lickspear, a developer that I never heard of, mentioned Nintendo is working on an achievement system for the Nintendo Switch. Quote from this developer, I don't know his name, Nintendo doesn't have official support for achievements and leaderboards like Sony or Microsoft, but we know they are working on it. We will see how it goes and we will add rankings along the way. After seeing those comments, a Reddit user brought up that an achievement system for Switch would seem like a secret. Tamazaki, I think that's the developer, said in response, Oops, move along, nothing to see here. P.S. But seriously, I have a real strong feeling they hinted it a few times. I hope achievements are coming on the Nintendo Switch. I, would, I love getting achievements on PlayStation and Steam. In my opinion, I even love the achievement system in Super Smash Bros. 4. So I would love if they have a similar achievement system for Nintendo and I would love if they if I would love if Super Smash Bros 4 was part of an ecosystem that my friends could see in general could see what my rank is of one of the best Nintendo players or something like that and maybe they could tie it with my Nintendo and maybe you could make it like Steam Steam Rewards that you can use sell your cards and you could get discounts on your games Maybe by playing the games and getting good at games and getting achievements, you can use that to go in my Nintendo and get physical rewards or discount codes for games on the Nintendo Switch well, and the 3DS if they care about it in the future. Just remember, moving forward, it's a rumor until Nintendo officially announced this. So let's move on to the VG Bulletin Mini. We got 8 bullets, yes, 8 bullets to shoot through. So let's get started with an interview from Rolling Stone with Christian Whitehead saying, well, I think my immediate plans are to take a bit of a holiday. He laughed. I am thinking ahead in terms of what I want to do tech wise and creatively. I got my own ideas for what I want to do with Sonic, but there's no point of telling that because it would have to be a collaborative process with Sega. I think our team has definitely enjoyed working on Sonic a lot and I love to do more. Before I did Sonic Mania, I set up the engine for Freedom Planet 2 and I prototyped a few original games which I have definitely have interest in pursuing. As far as Sonic Mania 2 initially, I was planning on I was planning on moving on to an original game, but I could I couldn't have imagined on something that big. The interview, the full interview, if you're interested, is gonna be in the description below. Let's go back in time to LA Noir Switch News. LA Noir will be another instance in which a Switch game costs ten dollar more at retail compared to the other platforms. The Nintendo Switch version will be fifty dollar compared to compared to other platforms at forty dollars. Let's punch on to Arms News on the. Japanese ARMS Twitter account, Nintendo reveals that ARMS 3.0 will introduce customizable controls. You'll be able to adjust sensitivity for motion controls. Nintendo should be releasing version 3.0, which will add Lollipop, the new character, her ARMS, and new stage and custom controls by mid this month. Let's fight on through Dragon Ball Xenoverse Switch news. Bandai Namco says Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 is a big hit on Switch, selling out in Japan. That was followed by another message earlier stating that there's a bit of a shortage for the physical version. More shipments are planned towards the end of this month. Let's adventure on through the Legend of Zelda news. Zelda Breath of the Wild surpassed the sales of Twilight Princess in Japan. Twilight Princess total sales set at 642,607 copies and Breath of the Wild had a total combined that includes Switch and Wii U of 709,091 copies in Japan. Let's strategize on to Fire Emblem Warriors news. Multiple Fire Emblem Warriors characters 
will be revealed at TGS 2017. Not only will the game be playable, but Koei Tecmo is planning multiple events for the game. The first section is taking place on September 1st between 2.30 p.m. and 3.15 JSP or Japanese Standard Time. Gameplay, videos, and details are promised and it sounds like we could be hearing about a new character, producer Yusuke Hashida and director Kura Hasuda, about to butcher those names, will be on hand along with Masahuro Yagaguchi from Intelligent Systems. Let's run on to 2K News. NBA 2K18 developers want a Nintendo Switch version to be the same as a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One version from day one. And 2K dedicate the second team, their second team, to make the Switch version the best that they could make it on the Nintendo Switch. If you want to hear this, the full quote, it's going to be in the description below. Well, that's everything part of the VG Bulletin Mini. It's time to make our way to Final Fantasy news, or you could say, completely Square Enix damage control news. Tabata Final Fantasy director tried to convince the media that he slipped up telling us something too early, saying, quote, it was just kind of a joke response. That said, we aren't dismissing the hardware in any way. We believe it's a great platform and we are open to look looking for opportunities and if the opportunity presents itself and there's something we can do with the given platform we'll like to do it i know square Enix is trying to cover their tracks but come on it's obvious they are creating something with tabata team for something for the nintendo switch tabata knows it i know it you're our b <laughs> tabata's being silenced but fans will never believe you we know nintendo and square Enix is silencing you because you'll be, you might be, it's, it's possible that Nintendo and Square Enix is planning something big for the Nintendo Switch. And I don't think it necessarily have to be Final Fantasy XV anymore. It's possible that Tabata might be making Final Fantasy Type 1. That's a thing, because Tabata made, directed Crisis Square, I think, and, and Type 1. So he could be making something in that vein for the Nintendo Switch and other platforms. But if that's the possibility, and it's most likely we might not see this project for a while. But all we can do is wait and see. It could be Final Fantasy 15 for it, or it could be a new game, Type 0 or Type 0 sequel, or something in that vein. So yes, it's about time to end my video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like videos like this one to help expand my channel and share the video if you think you can form someone else. Comment below about your opinions about these articles. So this is TalkGamer007 and I see you in the next one. Peace.